You're watching the world's only weekly lacrosse program, Lacrosse Inside the Game. With Gary Mark and Ron Messer. Welcome back this week in lacrosse. Gary Mark along with Ron Messer. Ron, a couple of pictures there of someone that people out there might recognize. Well, that last vintage picture, courtesy of our friend Womper at uh, Powers Bible Lacrosse, was Gordon Gare, as a, a famous player from Mimico in the 1930s, who went on to father Graham Gare, a uh, famous player in the in the 70s and the 80s, and who is the father of a current uh, lacrosse star, Jackson Gare from uh, Aurelia, so that you know the family uh, heritage is there. And the old program you saw there was from the 1931 International Pro League from a game at the Montreal Forum that featured the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Leafs because Connie Spines wouldn't let them use the word Maple Leafs. So you know the current uh, uh, Toronto Rock, the NLL, wasn't the first Pro League that was the very first Pro League. Interesting you know, little tip there, you wouldn't let them use Maple Leafs? Eh? Nope, he would not. <laughs> So an interesting week last week in the National Lacrosse League, just when you think you're starting to kind of figure it out, it's, it, seems, it seems to happen to us every year, just when you start to think you're figuring everything out, the cards get shuffled on you. Yep, uh, I had the good fortune of uh, uh, accompanying the Rock to Rochester last week, big shout out to my friends down in Rochester, they're real nice folks, Gary. And uh, the uh, Nighthawks took it to the Rock. And uh, we're the better team on the night. They chased Bobby Watson from the net very early, five goals in the first eight minutes. Chugger Dietrich finished the game off. But I'll tell you, Gary Gay, John Grant, and my two guys I wish were on my team, the two <laughs> Evans brothers, they put on a heck of a show for everybody in attendance. And uh, I think they took the Rock's focus away from them and uh, had the home crowd behind them and were handily and easily the better team on the floor. Yeah, 16 8 on the night, so safe to say, as I maybe alluded to or suggested last week, they're not old, they're not done. No. Uh, maybe just a bad game in Toronto. And, uh, and Toronto's maybe thinking the same thing, although we talked about it, they've never ever had a ton of success in Rochester. No. And just another loss for Toronto. Actually, the record is the only time they ever won was a championship game, otherwise, they're 0 and 15 at the Blue Cross Arena. That's a, that's a curse. Yep. That's a curse. So we'll quickly recap some of the other games there. Uh, I believe the one game there was on Friday night. Rochester, we called this one Rochester down in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And uh, Orlando came out on top there 13-8. Yeah, and uh, people after that game were calling for Coach Paul Gates' head. Uh, so I think that was maybe another reason that gave them some impetus to play the way they did on Saturday night. Uh, Washington. Looking really, really good there. Going into Colorado, 12-11. I think we both called this one. I actually just, uh, while we're on this, you went 5-1 and one on the week. Almost a near-perfect record, but you went with your heart in the rock. And I went 4-2. and two. So you picked up a game on me. Eh, I'm still okay there. I still have a two-game lead. But Washington going into Colorado. Colorado looks to be a, a, a little bit of a spark there with Steve Govett behind the bench now. But Washington looking really, really strong so far. Yep, Jeff Zawicki leading the league and scoring. Uh, with a really strong supporting cast behind him. Lewis Ratcliffe has uh, found the groove. I was speaking to uh, one of their stars, Kyle Sorensen's uh, brother today, and he's told me that the feeling uh, around the club is great. The uh, anticipated uh, that not liking Everett as opposed to their uh, San Jose home has totally disappeared. The people in the Everett Seattle area have adopted the stealth and they're all having a great time. Well, what a great team to adopt. I mean, they're, they're having a great season so far. You know what, in any professional sport, everybody loves a winner and everybody's going to back a winner and, and they're, they're doing so the next one there. Edmonton at home to Colorado and Edmonton comes out on top. Again, both of us picking the home team there. 14-11 on the defending champions. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> I, I, we talked about it off air here, Gary, 75% of the home team uh, did a calculation. Won. Yeah, did a calculation last week and I, I know we had, I talked about how hard it is to win in this league on the road and I did a calculation last week, I believe going into last week's game, I don't think I included them, but, but uh, we'll factor that in later. 75% of the winners this year so far going into last week were home teams. Well, it just uh, goes to show you maybe the rest of the home teams are getting. Uh, not having to fly guys in, the travel schedule maybe is telling on them already early in the season. But uh, good for you, home teams. Yeah. So the next one there, Buffalo, this is one of the ones that I had wrong, and you picked it right. Minnesota goes into Buffalo. I said last week I wanted to see something from Buffalo. Well, you get a Minnesota, I mean, there's no team that's a pushover here. Minnesota went in there. I thought Minnesota was going to come out with a victory. And sure enough, Buffalo uh, gets their first win on the season in front of the home fans. Yeah, uh, the big the change in personnel 
with the Bandits last week was they uh, shuffled uh, Delby Paulus aside. They released himself and A.J. Shannon uh, last week because they were looking for their first win in front of the, the Bandit, uh, Bandit Land, uh, the most noisy building in the circuit. And uh, that was another team. They, that was like a must win for oh, them for sure. as well. They, they had to. Because uh, when you look at this, is, this is pro sports. You're cutting the butts in the seats to uh, look after your bottom line, and there was a good chance that you know you're going to miss a couple of thousand people because you're not having a winner, and uh, that's 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 very important. So it puts a lot of pressure on the players and the management. Well, that's a I mean it's a vicious circle. If, if you're not going to win, you're not going to get people in the stands. You're not getting people in the stands. Yeah. You know financially the team's not getting supported, and just bad things happen from there. So. Uh, not every team in the National Lacrosse League is the Toronto Maple Leafs. No. So, uh, next game there, the Boston Blazers at home defeat Philly 11 to 9 in a pretty close game. I think we both picked that one as well. Yeah. Uh, Philly having a bit of a hard time this year. Uh, their only real uh, star is uh, uh, Jeff Schneider that I can I can uh, recall right now. Ethan Iannucci is having to take an entire year off for uh, knee, uh, rebuilding, reconstructive knee surgery. So they're hurt. And also, the, the, my, our Wings fans that are very kind to us and write us all the time, uh, they're hurting in the stands too, Gary. They're not drawn as big well, as I got a little bit of inside information, and I'm, we're going to touch back on Philly in a few minutes here. Okay. Anyways, the last game of the weekend there, uh, as we said, Toronto and Rochester, the one that you attended, 16-8 mm -hmm. Rochester. Uh, Toronto's first loss of the season. Uh, big game for Rochester. Needed to win that one uh, after having lost two in a row last week here in Toronto, or excuse me, two weeks ago in Toronto, and on the Friday night there down in Orlando. So, Yeah. Uh, Star Wars night in Rochester. <laughs> what did you go as? Whatever. Okay, let's move on. So that's pretty much going to wrap up the first piece here. We'll be back in a few minutes to give you our picks for this week.